Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my next Let's Play. I'm going to be playing through The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons and The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. These were two games that were released in 2001. Uh, they were Game Boy Color games and they had a very unique uh, property which basically allowed you to connect the two games together. Now, unlike Pokemon and other games that tried, you know, the whole, uh, kind of, you know, linking or having two different versions of the game and whatnot, um, this is not necessarily, like, the same game or the same story. Uh, these are actually two different games here. But if you actually link the two games together, where once you beat one and you play the other one afterwards, and you can actually connect them by either using, like, a game link code or you can connect them by, once you beat the game, it'll give you a password that you input in the other game, which will about allow you to basically start a link game. You can get some continuations of the story and kind of a bigger overarching plot that actually connects the two games in the process, which is kind of cool. But um, we're going to be mostly talking about that stuff when I actually get to Oracle of Ages. I'll mention some things here and there, uh, but uh, for the most part, though... Um, when it comes to any of the Link game stuff, I'll just wait till I do that a bit later. So we're just going to go ahead and get things started here. Um, secrets, this is basically where you uh, put in a code and continue on your game uh, once you beat one of the games. And Game Link is where you can actually, I think you either do the same thing or you unlock something uh, just by, like, just connecting via a Game Link cable. But uh, we're not going to worry about that, we're just going to go straight for a new game here. We're going to call ourselves Slim, because why the heck not? That is our name, after all. And yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. <clears throat> Accept our quest, hero. And here we are. We are in the world of Holodrum. This is where the story of Oracle of Seasons takes place. We can't really do too much right now, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, move over here. And it looks like we have a nice little roaring campfire party right now. You're awake. Please relax. Join our jovial troupe of performers for a bit. Din is a popular dancer. Just seeing her dance raises one's spirits. Ah, Din always looks so lovely, but she seems smitten with you. I'm jealous. Well, too bad. <laughs> Go ahead and just keep drinking your beer, I guess. Din has been caring for you since she found you. She's strong-willed, but very kind-hearted. Oh, your eyes have opened. Are you alright? I am Impa, the troop's cook. And you are? Slim, I see. Din, the dancing girl, found you collapsed in the woods. She's cared for you through your nightmares. Ah, well, thank you. Let's talk. You've awakened. Good. I worried while you slept. You're Slim, right? How do you do, Slim? I am Din. I saw a red flash in those woods, and when I went to see what it was, 
You were lying there. Mystery surrounds you, Slim. I'm just glad you're better. Come, won't you dance with me? Okay, sure. Don't be shy. Dancing will be fun. <laughs> I love Link right here. He's just, like, so embarrassed and, uh... You know, obviously very nervous uh, with uh, dancing with a very beautiful woman. <laughs> uh, but he's having fun with it. That was fun. You're a good dancer. It's been some time since I had such fun. Hey, your left hand. It has a triangle on it. That is a sacred mark in tri Hy Hyrule. <laughs> if it's the true symbol, then you are a hero with a special fate. Slim. A special fate. Slim, I... Um... Nothing. Let us dance. Uh-oh. Oh no. The lightning is destroying everything. Yahaha! <laughs> I found you, Din, Oracle of Seasons. You hid yourself well, but you cannot escape Onox, General of Darkness. I love the tornado right there. <laughs> Get out of my way, boy. Ha! Huh? Slim! What do you plan to do with me? As you know, if I imprison the Oracle of Seasons and bury the temple that houses the Season Spirits, the Seasons of Holodrum will be cast into chaos, the bountiful gifts of nature will rot, and all living things perish. That is the world of darkness that I long for. No, Onox, no! Ha ha ha! Yeah! Down, Temple of Seasons! Spring, summer, fall, winter! Fall into chaos! Well, that can't be good. <laughs> Wahaha! <laughs> Slim, are you alright? Actually, I am the nurse of Hyrule's Princess Zelda. And Din's no dancer either. She is actually the Oracle of Seasons who wields control over the forces of nature. Zelda has mystical powers that told of a curtain of shadow drawing around Din. I was instructed to take her to Hyrule in secrets. Zelda gave me this quest, but ow, I have been wounded, and I won't be able to travel for some time. Slim, I know not why you were lying in the woods, but you and Din were fated to meet. If the Triforce on your left hand is real, then you may be the hero who will save the world. Please, use your power to aid Din. Please take my message to the Maku Tree in Horon Village. The Maku Tree is the guardian of all of Holodrum. Surely he can help. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is the world of Oracle of Seasons. As you can see, it's kind of uh, constructed like Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. It has kind of the uh, two-button system of the B and A button. And you have very different menus you can scroll through. I'll talk about these later as they become important. Um, but if you go over here, this is just kind of where you ended up to start with. So there's not really anything we can do right now. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and go south to Horon Village, which is our first destination. And as you can see, the seasons of Oracle of Seasons are completely thrown out of whack. Uh, the seasons will randomly go from one season to another season. Uh, some areas of the game are stuck in a single season and you have to come back later when you have the ability to change them. It's just a system you have to work with here. So let's kind of start talking to these people. This is Horon Village. Hey, I've never seen you before. The Maku Tree? Head east. 
If you get into the flower, you can shoot up to the cliff, too. It works only in spring when flowers bloom, so I'm getting my fill of it. Okay, so we got that. Let's talk to you. The seasons are a mess. Winter goes straight into summer. What's going on? I have no idea. Doesn't sound very good, though. <laughs> Here's a shop. Uh, they don't sell anything just yet, though. I think you need to get your sword before they'll sell anything. And here's actually an interesting house. We have a nice little family here. I am Bippin, the expert arborist. I know plenty about trees. Now let me tell you something. Blossom and I just had our first child. Yes, we did. Have a look. Hey, you pushed me over here. <laughs> I am Blossom. This is my first child, a healthy baby boy. But I'm having trouble choosing a name. Can you help me think of a one? What would you like to call him? So we get to actually name this kid. And this is actually kind of a cool feature of this game. Uh, basically, you name the kid and you can actually come back and see the kid grow up during the course of your journey. And if you actually do a link game to Oracle of the Ages, or, you know, if you name him in Ages and move on to Seasons, you can actually continue to watch him grow up, too, which is kind of just a really, really cool feature of this game. So, yeah, I always thought that was really neat. As for a name, let me think about this. Uh, Stan? No... Andy, no. You know what? It's got to be John Pieces. It, it has to be at this point. Although that will not fit, and I don't want to go with just John, so we're going to name him JP. You would name him JP? Yes. It's a fine name. That's what I'll call him. He seems happy to have it. Come visit us anytime. I hope JP will grow strong and healthy like you. So yeah, I always thought that was a cool little thing about this game. So we'll uh, we'll definitely come on by and uh, watch little Johnny Pieces as he grows up. <laughs> Our guardian, the great Maku Tree, stands beyond the gate to the east of town. It's said a hero with a sword will come to speak with him. I wonder if it's true. Well, I don't have a sword, so that's kind of uh, ruining that plan. And this room right here has uh, can't do anything yet written all over it, so... We'll go ahead and ignore this, too. Do you know of the Hero's Cave near the western coast? The Hero's Sword is said to be hidden there, but no one has ever found it. You know what? That probably sounds like something we should do before we do anything else. So we're going to go, actually, over to the west and check out that Hero's Cave first. We have some more people we can talk to. It goes from hot to cold in a flash. The seasons are in utter chaos. What will it do to this year's harvest? This is the house of the wise know-it-all birds. See them if you have questions. So yeah, these are basically... You come here to get tips about the game or how to play the game, but... I think I'm pretty good. I can kind of learn stuff as we go through it and be pretty familiar with what we have to do. Okay, so yeah, the Hero's Cave is going to be in this direction. Got to follow the uh, path and the snow drifts over here. I believe this is just a fairy fountain, but if you need healing, you can always come to one of these and get a full health refill, which is always nice. Okay, I don't think we can do anything over here, but I do just want to kind of check this out. We are on the beach after all, and... Nothing wrong with the beach. I love going to the beach. I haven't gone to the beach in a very long time, though. It's It's been a minute or two. It's been a couple of minutes, actually. So yeah, this is the Hero Cave, and... Uh, the Hero's Cave is pretty big. And we don't have a weapon, so we're going to have to just kind of move through this section without uh, being able to fight any enemies, which is kind of a shame. But it is what it is. Not much we can do about that. Yeah, you can push blocks. Most blocks can only be pushed in, like, one direction, though. So if there's one block that's not moving, try pushing it in another direction, too, just in case. Okay, so right... Damn it, keys. <laughs> okay, not the sword we're looking for, but there is a key, so we'll have to find a locked door. Thankfully, there was a locked door back this way. Does this even count as a dungeon? It does. Okay, interesting. It's not a traditional dungeon by any means, but uh, it does give us a nice little dungeon map we can use to kind of navigate through here. Let's 
see if we go down here, we have the locked door, we'll open it after getting tackled by a keys again. I really want to fight these guys, but there's not much we can do until we grab this sword. You got the wooden sword. This is truly a sign of courage. Hold A or B to power it up, then release it for a spin attack. Okay, so there we go. We have our first sword, and I think I am very happy about that. Uh, before we do anything else, though, and yep, we can attack now, which is really, really nice. We're going to go over here and actually drop down. And Link's Awakening, this actually would have given us like a heart piece or something, but this is actually just 30 rupees. But hey, nothing wrong with that. Once we get back into town, we can actually buy some stuff. And I actually have an idea of what I want to buy too, so it all works out. Let me just go ahead and fight more of these keys. One thing I do actually kind of appreciate that they did in this game, um, as opposed to Link's Awakening, is rupee drops, like, they just made them, like, different slight shades of color differences. In this game, like, uh, the green rupees, which are the one single rupees, uh, they're, like, small, while the bigger five rupees are, you know, slightly bigger in size. Which is kind of a nice way to kind of tell the difference between them. Uh, but yeah, we have our sword. We can actually uh, destroy bushes and grass now. We can't destroy these trees or these snowdrifts yet, though, so we're going to have to ignore them for right now. But this stuff we can destroy no problem. You can find some more stuff here if you uh, look hard enough. Just a heart there, unfortunately. Uh, but let's go ahead and look uh, at this village a little more before we uh, move on. Because there are a couple of things we can do now. Come on. Thank you. There we go. Uh, I also want to get, like, three more rupees before I do anything else. Maybe I'll get some rupees here. Oh, that's one. There we go, okay. That is absolutely perfect. Oh, wait, shoot, I need more than that. <laughs> Damn it, I thought I needed only 40 to get these two items, but nope. I need 50. Well, let's just go ahead and get the bombs for right now. Shield, we can come back for at any time. Honestly, I don't even think the shield is really even required. It might be, and if, if it is, there might be a place where we can get it later. But, um, yeah, I can't grab that right now, unfortunately. Uh, so here we have another building. We'll go ahead and go in here. This is uh, Vasu. I love the way he dances. A really cool look for him. <laughs> Do come in. I am Vasu, the jeweler. Is this your first time? Then let me explain jewelry. Rings made from mystical seeds have very mystical powers. If you wear one, its mystical power will be passed to you. But you must keep it in your ring box. The mystical power will gradually weaken and you won't be able to use it, understood? Yes. Oh, you don't have a ring box. I like you, so here, take this ring box. So we got the level 1 ring box. It can hold one ring. Take this ring as a sign of our friendship. And we get another ring. Until you've had a ring appraised and its power revealed, you cannot wear it. Let's appraise it. So we're going to go ahead and appraise this ring. And we get the friendship ring, symbol of a meeting. I'll appraise it for free this time, but after this it'll be 20 rupees per ring. If you get two of the same ring, I'll buy one for 30 rupees. Now, the list of appraised rings get added to the list. When you want a ring, move it from your list to your box. Talk to me to see your list. Let's take a peek at it now. Rings do nothing unless worn. So yeah, uh, throughout the game you can collect these rings. Um, we only have uh, one ring right now, the friendship ring. Um, but over the game we'll get some other rings, and some have some pretty unique effects. Some can be mainly just like cosmetic changes, uh, but others can actually like, uh, for instance, there's one that uh, gives you better drops from enemies, there's one that, you know, increases your attack power but lowers your defense, you know, little effects like that. And there's some rings you can only get like in very specific circumstances, and there's also some rings you can only get whenever you do a linked game. So we'll not be able to get all the rings in this playthrough, but we'll try to get as many as we can. And um, basically I'll make it so I get all the rings that are basically rings you can get, but any of the just like random rings, because there are a bunch of rings where, you know, it's basically random if you get the one you want or not. I'll probably not worry about those, but I'll kind of talk about that more as we get to the end of the playthrough. 
And also in Vasu's shop, you have these uh, two snakes. Uh, these snakes basically come into play with the linked game atmosphere of this, these two games. Where I believe the blue one can kind of give you some extra rings if you do link with someone. While the red one actually allows you to transfer your rings to the other game. And you can do this via a game link cable, you can do it via a secret, which is basically the same way you would basically start a link game, where you type in a long code and you actually bring that code over to the other game and vice versa, yada yada, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to be focusing on this too much, maybe once I do the link game I'll show it off then, just so we can show all the rings moving over to the other file. But aside from that, let's uh, not worry about it too much and actually get a move on. The rings are honestly a pretty cool feature of this game. I do really like it, but again, I wish it was easier to collect them all because there's like a lot of rings and, uh, you know, I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff, so obviously there's like a lot I want to do with that. Okay, so for fun, let's go ahead and blow this. I love how he just like was watching me. He's like, what, are you, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I think this is actually just rupees, but hey, we can actually buy that shield now if we wanted it. I probably might still pass on it for now. Because again, it's not going to be like super important, but I'll come back and buy it later. Uh, so what else do we got? So I believe this is the way to the Maku Tree, which I'm not quite ready for yet. We will definitely talk to the Maku Tree before we end this video though, so do not worry about that. Um, here we have a clock maker. I want to make a cuckoo clock better than any before, but I can't find a wooden bird that I like. One that's just breathtaking. Okay, so I believe that's uh, part of the trade quest. Uh, like Link's Awakening, there is a trade quest that can get you something important if you do it. And we will definitely be doing it uh, throughout the game, but for now, um, we don't have the items we need just yet. This is the mayor's home. The mayor is fascinated with gasha nuts now. The place planter and the planter's deeds affect what the nut produces. The mayor found a good place recently, so he is quite happy. So let's go ahead and talk to him. I'm Rule, mayor of Horon Village. Do you have any gasha seeds? If you plant one in soft earth, it'll grow into a tree that bears nuts. Inside those nuts, you'll find all sorts of things. It's so fun, I can't help myself. There's some soft earth just outside. Plant it there. You don't know about Gasha Seeds? You're missing out. I'll give you my prized Gasha Seed to welcome you to town. So here we got a Gasha Seed, the other kind of uh, feature that's kind of introduced in this game. We'll be paying attention as we uh, go through the game. There's some soft earth just outside. Plant it there. Well, I will do just that after I blow a hole in your wall to open up this and find another Gasha Seed. So we have two Gasha Seeds now. There's actually going to be two uh, pieces of uh, soft soil that are actually accessible to us right now. There's one right here, so we'll go ahead and plant one here. And basically, in order for a Gasha Seed to grow, you would think it would be just like changing the seasons to the right season. Uh, but actually, it involves uh, killing enemies. After you kill a certain number of enemies, the Gasha Seed will grow, and then you can pretty much continue on from there. In the west part of town are the know-it-all birds. See them if you have a question. Zzz. Oh, he's sleeping. Okay, well, whatever. Oh, no! I didn't want to use that. Maku Tree Gate. Show courage to gain passage. So, we'll just go ahead and slice this door open. And there he is, the great Maku Tree, who's also asleep. So, we're just going to wake him up by uh, popping his sleep bubble. <laughs> Oh, who, who's that? Did you wake me? Who are you? Mm, what? Din was taken while I slept? There's no sign of the Temple of Seasons? This is awful. Guarding the Oracle is my duty. Alas, how I've with withered. What's to be done, Slim? With the seasons in chaos, the land is robbed of the very essence of nature, draining all of my might. Can you save Din in my stead? It is all this Maku Tree has ever asked. I sense evil on the northern peak, where the Temple of Seasons rested. Onox has cast a shadow on the northern peak. I think you will find him there. You will need the eight essences of nature that lie sleeping in Hollow Drum. Gathering all eight is the only option. The essences possess the sacred power of nature, 
with which you can break the shadow barrier and save Din. Shall I repeat it? No. Then I give you this key. Go to the giant root near the lake up north. The first essence should be there, but I'd expect some resistance. Be careful. I'll just, um, rest until... Oh, no energy. Bzzz. Okay, well, at least he gave us the key beforehand. So, yeah, we got the key, and the key will be important because it'll actually give us access to our very first dungeon. And we're going to go there. We're not going to finish the dungeon because we're already 25 minutes into this video. But we will actually get there, and then next video we'll take on the first dungeon. Along the way, we'll also find some other things we can do. As you can see, like, this area right here is pretty much locked into winter at the current time. Also, here's another uh, soft spoil spot. So I'll go ahead and plant one there. And, you know, this actually looks kind of a familiar if you think about it. Didn't Dungeon 1 in uh, Legend of Zelda, the first game, uh, kind of happen on this little island connected by a bridge? And wasn't it also kind of a tree, too? Interesting. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you for watching, everybody. Join us next time in Legend of Zelda Oracle Seasons when we take on Dungeon 1. See you guys then. Later, folks.